Let's give this a shot. everybody welcome back to the engineered angler i was out fishing yesterday pretty much all day but I had a great day in spite of the heavy winds out there in the gulf of mexico uh, but i was fishing with a lure i just made and i kind of made this lure on a lark it's a jig uh, i posted some photographs of it on facebook just to share and let me show you what it looks like So it's a squid jig and I made it kind of as a lark and out of some parts that are sort of unusual. But this thing really ended up working even though I really don't fish the, the kind of water that uh, you use this kind of jig in. So let's go in the shop and I'll show you how I made it. So the inspiration for this design just came from uh, seeing a lot of your designs. Some of you guys out there who are members of Facebook groups that make jigs and, and lures and we're posting some really cool looking jigs. Now I don't have a whole lot of use for this kind of jig or at least I thought I didn't uh, but I really really like the idea of a, a transparent head and the whole jig look uh, kind of like a, a big fly. I shelved the idea for a little while and then I was at work and I was working on something with a pen in my hand and I dropped the lid and when I took a look at that lid, I knew exactly what it was good for. So now it should be obvious what this is made out of. So let's go ahead and make one. So let's do a close tour of the design. It's a little bit rudimentary, but I think I can make it a little nicer and make it work. If you look on the inside, there's a bullet weight that I powder painted pink. Uh, there's a wire that goes all the way through. I used really heavy wire for this. I'm going to downsize that wire because it's a little too tough to bend. Then I have some fly tying material uh, whipped onto that wire as it goes through. And at the very end, uh, the hook. And the hook is just put on there with a split ring and swings freely. And that's a bit of a problem. I had a bunch of hits that didn't hook up. So that I need to improve. Otherwise, I like the design. Uh, my fly tying technique is not the greatest, uh, but I really like this reflective stuff and the green uh, and the white looks great in the water. And I do want to change something. I don't want to use this uh, fly tying hair. I'm going to use uh, some of this stuff. Now I went out and got so excited I bought a bunch of stuff. I've got all this flash in really nice colors. And I also went out and got some silicone. These are skirts and skirt material. And I, I, I want to use this in lieu of the hair. I think it'll give you a little more flash, a little more movement, and it won't tangle in the hook as much. Now the other change I want to make is I want to have the hook fixed on the wire. I don't want it dangling so that it, it actually acts more like uh, the hook on a spinnerbait. So it's just out there. If you hit it, you're going to get hooked. And the way I got this fixed on there uh, nice and snug like that, I did a wire snell. And I probably could have given it a couple more wraps, but this will do it. I'll probably fix it in place uh, with a little bit of resin, and that should do it. So the other thing you're going to need is a bullet weight. Now, uh, the bullet weight makes for a really handy weight because it's got a hole in it already, and that means the wire can go right through it. It fits that uh, cone shape of the top of this lid. You just need to be sure that the di diameter of the weight is small enough to get up in there. So you're also going to need a drill bit small enough so that uh, you don't have a whole lot of material come out when you fill the, the head of your uh, jig. This is a 16th inch bit and it'll work. Now this wire is a, is a 1.03 millimeter which is 0 0.040 inches in diameter. It's stainless steel. It's an orthodontic wire. And I get it from a place called Benjamin Dental Supply out of uh, Pennsylvania. And I'll put the contact information in the description. So let's get to it. First thing is we need to drill the uh, tip out. 
you'll notice there's a little ball inside there already. So once you drill it out, it should come out. And there you go. So the wire should fit through there pretty easily now. So should be able to slide the wire in. Okay, the next step of modifying this is to cut off the little clip. And all I do is just cut it off with my little circular uh, cutter on my Dremel tool. And then I apply a little bit of resin on there just to keep it shiny. The next step is to powder paint the bullet weight. Now you don't have to powder paint. You can just uh, spray paint it or you can just leave it dull. Uh, either way, I like it powder painted. It gives it a little better shine. All right, beautiful. So there's the finish. Really glossy red, nice. Okay, we don't need that anymore. Let's go ahead and set this uh, hook up so we can tie on all the fly tying stuff, all the flourishes and skirt material and all that stuff. And just by placing it here, I know I want my snell just up inside there and I want the material that's getting tied on to start right about there so I don't have a problem getting this wire through uh, the weight. Now my intention is to have a long flowing uh, tendrils, I guess you want to call them, down past the hook, probably about two inches. And then I'll come in with these uh, more loose <laughs> silicon tendrils. And the silicon skirt material will give it more of a natural movement. It'll undulate a little more in the water. Now I'm going to start with the darker of the flash material. It's a dark green. And I'm going to get that right up against the wire. And I'm whipping it in right about the half point of its length. Now I'm coming in with the lighter strands. I want the strands to be along the wire so they show through the clear resin on the body. And now I'm going to start with the silicon skirt material. Now I'm going to apply this just like you would on a bass jig with about a third of it uh, forward and then the other two thirds over the actual hook. And I do my best to distribute the material around the steel shaft as best I can. I'll tie a good wide band on it and then cut off the excess. Here it's complete and all I really need to do from here is trim a little off the long fibers. I'm going to fill the whole plastic lid with UV resin but first I need to put a little bit up front just to make sure there's plenty in front of the lead weight. Here. I'm slipping it in and you can see I put a little bit of blue tape in the front just to keep it from seeping out. Now I'll give it a quick shot with the UV flashlight just to give it the initial set. Now I'll fill the rest of the cavity leaving enough room in the top so that I can push the whole skirt down in there without uh, displacing so much that it overflows. Okay that looks about right and now I can just shove it in there and it won't overflow. And now for some time in front of the UV floodlight, it'll fully set in about a minute, minute and a half. I want to trim a little bit off these really long tendrils. They're just a little too much. And now we're really close to being done. I want some differential lengths, so I'm cutting a little more off some of the tendrils just to give it a little bit of a break in the length. So it's time to make the tie-on eye in the front. Here I just make a bend with my jewelry pliers. Then I bend back the base to create a little bit of a shoulder so I have a nice centered eye. And then I rotate the long leg all the way around to get a 90 on uh, the standing leg. So here is what it looks like. Now all I got to do is wrap it around the main shank two or three times. So I hold it with the pliers again and just wrap it back with my fingers. No big deal. And here's what it looks like. Nice and neat. All I have to do now is cut off that tag end. Now on the original jig I put the eyes on the inside of the body. On this one I'm going to place the eyes on the outside of the body and then I'll just ferret all in 
with UV resin. This will give me a really neat look. I even put an extra lens of resin on top of the eye. Looks pretty nice. Now for some time under the light for a full cure. It even looks like a squid already. So sorry about the sound, I had a little problem with my mic wire. Hope you can deal with the voiceover. <laughs> anyway, here is the original. I just wanted to show you the difference between this and the one I just made. So two big differences. The first big difference is the rigid hook uh, that will not swing, will not move. Hopefully that'll give me better hookups. Also, I put the eyes on the outside. You see that and you see how they're fared in with the UV uh, resin. Makes for a nice finish. The skirt is pretty nice. I might do it a little heavier on the next one, but I also made a third. And on this one, I went a little bit uh, overboard on the eyes. <laughs> and I used some of my frog eyes that I made on a video just a couple of uh, weeks ago. I don't know, I kind of like it. I made the uh, silicone skirt just a little heavier. And I kind of like the way it looks. It looks a little radical, but uh, who knows? Maybe it'll work. So in the meantime, I really do want uh, to have some input from you guys on this style of hook. Now I kind of like the single hook sort of swinging but I, I'm a little bit hesitant to continue to use it because uh, I have such limited hookup. You guys got any ideas on how to make this better? Should I maybe use a little bit bigger hook? If you have some ideas uh, please share them in the comments. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you get something out of this build. So thank you for watching. Catch you on the next video and enjoy a little bit of a slideshow of the squid jigs. Mm -hmm.